What's up, Lashinistas? Welcome to the show. This is the LibBay podcast, where we talk about the ever-growing eyelash business. If this is your first time listening to the show, welcome. This podcast is dedicated to helping you grow as a lash artist and or lash business owner. So whether you work in your home right now, (laughs) whether you work for a company or yourself, this podcast is for you. Hey guys, this is Mike and Shauna Jones. We are the owners of Live Bay Lash. Our heart is to share with you guys our uphill battle in this lash industry and to give you guys, I don't know. Real raw version. A real raw version. What things are really like in today's episode. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. We're going to be talking about, (laughs) uh, there are no shortcuts. Yeah. There are no shortcuts. And there are no shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, bef- you know, before we jump into that, a lot of you guys are sitting around the house right now. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Obviously, there's no classes going on right now at the present moment. All the ones that were scheduled to go on this month will be going on uh, next month. We're going to be doing lots of makeup dates. So please stay tuned. We'll be posting them and we'll go on live. If you haven't subscribed yet to us on social media, we have uh, two of them on, on Insta. We have Live Bay Lash and Live Bay Lash Supplies. So if you're looking for classes, just check out the supplies one. Uh, no, Live Bay Lash class. Oh, shit. We have three of them. Sorry. <laughs> we actually have five, but... Two of them are fake accounts. We can spy on people. No, <laughs> 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 we will be posting the updates, so I promise we'll be reaching out to you guys. We're going to make it worth your time. Thank you so much. Um, not sure when you're actually listening to this podcast, but hopefully <laughs> we're still shipping orders. <laughs> it's the only thing we have left to keep our sanity. Yeah. Uh, all right. So jumping into this episode, there are so many of you out there. I see this all the time in our Facebook group or on our YouTube channel that you guys are so frustrated and ready to give up right away. And there's nothing more frustrating for me than to see somebody want to throw in the towel right away. Yeah. Like they take that first little punch on the chin. Their little, their little ego can't take it. They're either not good at something. They're not great at lashing. They're not like you know, boss babe on 900 level, knowing how to whip out mega volume sets with a full set of books, making six figures a year, and they're ready to give up right away. And that's just not how the real world works. And so everybody wants to be at the finished product. Nobody wants to actually do the journey. Nobody wants to go out there and embrace the grind and the hustle that comes along with getting to be successful in this industry. And so I just want to let you guys know there really are no shortcuts. If there was a cheat code or a secret sauce or a special ingredient, we would have gone back to episode one and been like, hey, episode one, how to cheat the system. (laughs) Yeah. Here you go. I'm giving you guys the formula. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way in anything. Yeah. And so I think that, I think that in order to kind of fully appreciate, you have to understand what those steps are. And we're going to kind of go down those steps one by one so that you guys can kind of understand what's involved with that to get you to that maturity level. Yeah, I would say, just like you said on the Facebook groups, like I see it all the time. Everybody's like, hey, you know, or they've been doing classic for, let's say, like a month and they're just so ready to like do mega volume. And, you know, there are some ways that you can, you know, speed up your process and there's specific tools and techniques that you can use to, you know, get you to learn something quicker. But this industry is all practice and, it's just like anything else. It, and it really just goes back to like your character and who you are as a person, like how easy you want to give up. But just know that, you know, I worked from home from 2011 to 2016, right? And, you know, granted, I am back in 2011, there wasn't like trainings like there are now. And, you know, no pe- YouTube, no YouTube. People are more nice and open now with, you know, trying to teach and give value to this whole industry. But, you know, I really embraced the entire grind for so many years. And Super I, embraced. Yeah, like literally, like I was. She just, did free lashes for a year. Yeah, an entire all of her year. All for friends and family. Yeah. And anybody, one year, no money. Yeah, it's no money. We still made no money after four years. <laughs> yeah. We were so broke. But and just so you guys know, we didn't just open our doors, become you know, the lash company of the century. And all of a sudden we were making millions of dollars. Even when we had people work for us, they were making so much more money than us. And I would just like, you know, you have that facade like, oh yeah, yeah, that's great. I'm glad you got $1,500 in one week. I'm like negative. Let me tell you, you know, I haven't had a paycheck in months. Yeah. So let me just tell you, I, but I think that, you know, going through those years of all that has really brought us to where we are now because Mike and I really know 
well, we don't know every situation because we've been in some pretty sh- shitty situations where we're, we're still not laying known. new ones. Yeah, but some expensive new ones. Yeah, but I would just say that I think the journey has really gotten us all the ups and downs and the wave of the whole thing has really gotten us to where we are now. So I would just say embrace it and stop like getting frustrated when people tell you no practice practice because you guys like I see it on the the groups all the time. They get so frustrated with people just telling speaking the truth. And, you know, when you're doing shortcuts in this industry, you're going to get sloppy. You're going to produce sloppy work, sloppy experiences, and you're not going to be able to keep your clientele. Yeah. you. Can, I mean, you guys should want, like, I don't know. I, as a kid, I grew up playing video games. And, and if I couldn't, like, get to the final level or beat the final boss, I would get so frustrated. And that would be my life for the next three weeks. Yeah. Staying up late trying to beat that video game over and over because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle being told – I'd break some controllers here and there, but I mean, like, I couldn't handle being told no or couldn't, like, they couldn't finish the mission. And so some of you out there, you, you know, you're doing lash sets right now. And it's taking you four or five hours to do a volume set. And that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah. That's where you're supposed to be. But your goal should be to focus and work and work and work until your work is clean and that thing's taking two hours. And, like, every little level of this thing has another thing you can do to really hone your skills or hone your craft. And so I think if you go back, you look at the most basic level of this thing. I think one of the things, if you're working for somebody right now that you take for granted, that you don't know, is learning how to book your own clients and manipulate the schedule to move it around to fit other people in. I'll never forget when we first started using a booking system. My wife in the beginning used to take a piece of paper and a pen and she would do everything by text or phone call and write in the book. 9 a.m. appointment, and so this girl had a 9 a.m., and this one had a 9.30, and you know, and then people would no-show or cancel. So then we started using a booking system, and if somebody would cancel, the girls, our receptionists, would put, you know, block out because they didn't have anybody else to fill that appointment with, but they wouldn't shrink the block out. So if it was a three-hour volume set, they'd leave that three-hour window completely blocked so nobody else could book. Yeah, the last artist would just sit. Just sit there and twiddle their thumbs. So you have to learn how to use the booking system, book your clients, and manipulate, move people around. Okay, you got a client coming in, they need to fill, it's an hour appointment. You got two 15 minute windows here and a 45 minute here. Learn how to text the other clients, move them around, strategically get people to move up, move down so you can make room squeeze. We never turn clients down. No. My wife's still to this day like, did you tell them no? Yeah, we're fully booked. You tell them yes, we'll find a way to make it work. (laughs) Yeah. It's like a Rubik's cube, quick, three more turns to the right, boom, red. What'd I tell you, that's how you do it. (laughs) And they're all sitting around like we created fire, you know, like, whoa, you know. Yeah. But you have to learn how to do, I know some of you guys are like, yeah, I know how to book people. Oh yeah, you know how to book people and do lashes and handle your own complaints and still order supplies. And like, these are things you're gonna have to learn how to do on the fly. In the beginning, you don't start out and you're like, like, you ask any restaurant owner, like any real successful restaurant owner. He doesn't just put on his sport jacket and walk around, shake hands, and ask him about the 74 Chateau Lafique wine that he's about <laughs> to open for him. If the fry guy doesn't show up, he's in the back blanching fries. Yeah. If the dishwasher's late, he's running plates. It's not just about like, China. everybody's like, oh, they have an eight-figure company. They have all these locations. They have this big warehouse. They just sit around a pile of money all day. I'm like, oh, sweaty. So I can wipe <laughs> the boob sweat from underneath my boob here. Like it doesn't go down that way. No. People like, they literally like, if they see me walking out with a toilet scrub brush in my hand or I'm, with, I'm at work in my Air Jordans and my ripped jeans, you know, like in the back helping package or break down boxes or run stuff to the dumpster, like you have to learn this thing at every level. And that's why I said there's literally no shortcuts. You have to learn the most fundamental stuff in this business. Yeah. I, and I would say that, you know, I think issues that people have had when they have left us is they've been so spoiled with in our system. In our system. <laughs> yeah. Like literally, they'll just come to work and they have all these clients and they tip great and then they go home and like they don't understand there's like booking there's getting cancellation fees there's getting deposits there's ordering your supplies there's cleaning your room like these girls like don't even realize like their rooms are being cleaned you know the receptionists take care of everything the complaints we deal with a bad yelp review on our yelp account we deal with it like there's so much and then when they go out on their own and they're like, yeah, and like realistically, yeah, they're making a little bit more money, but think of all the added stress. And this is added stress that they have no experience with. Yeah. So they are like, they're making tons of mistakes to eventually get to where they should be. And there's really no shortcut in that unless you just take your lumps or you're actually learning. You know, you're learning from the salon owners or the receptionists, or you're taking the initiative to learn by yourself. There's, there's no shortcut with that. There's always something to learn in this business. Like even if you're just a lash artist sitting around, you should be taking time to pick the receptionist brain. 
like see, like pick their brain, see what they're dealing with. How are they overcoming some of those complaints? How are they collecting those deposits? How are they? Listen, man, I've seen some of our client, or some of our receptionists get so belittled by clients that come out and just mf them. They're like the last person, last line of defense on the way out the door, and they've taken some serious flack before. Yeah, for sure. So just know, like, it, like it, there's going to be little things you're going to have to learn how to do. Um, collecting deposits is a whole nother like anomaly in itself. Like you're going to have to learn how to ask for money, ask for money from yeah. people. Some of you out there, you, you came straight out the womb, right? You just came <laughs> out of beauty school and you're like, I'm just going to sling lashes and life's going to be great. And then you got that one client who's either habitually late, who shows up, you know, 20, 30 minutes late for the appointment, always has an excuse. They were at the dentist or in a car accident, a lot of new cars in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> or they no showed you four times and you keep trying to like, you're just desperate for money. So you just keep rescheduling and you let them push you around a little bit. You're going to have to learn how to put your foot down and be like, hey, listen, it's a $25. If you don't show, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't show, that money goes in my pocket. If you do show, it goes towards the service. You have to learn how to ask for that. And it's the scariest thing in the world when you've never had to ask for money before. Yeah, for sure. You can it hear is. the receptionist voice go, we need to do this to collect it. It is. Um, another thing I'll say, and this is like just totally opposite. This is like, um, there's no shortcuts when learning a new technique. And I think that you really have to remember that every single tweezer is different and every single technique and the way people, you know, make fans or they use easy fans. There's so many different things and what works for me may not work for you. And I think that people are always looking for like the magical tweezer, you know, and (laughs) it's just like (laughs) this magic wand. Yeah. It's like this magic wand and everybody's like, Oh, what's the best tweezer for? And it's like, okay, well I could give my opinion on that, but that's because it works for me. You know, you have to go through and, figure out what tools work for you. There's no shortcut with that. You've got to try multiple tweezers. You have to try multiple lash trays. You know, so you may be asking like in these Facebook groups, like, oh yeah, my glue sucks and blah, 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 but it's not the glue. You have to learn that like, this is a science. You know, what are you prepping with? What's the dry time? How fast are your hands? Like there's so many things to it and you have to learn all of this because there is no shortcut with that. I agree. Just to put a dude spin on it. It's like when I do jujitsu and one of the little 135 pound guys tries to show a flying arm bar, you know, I'm like 270 pounds <laughs> in order for me to pull that off, I have to hit it on shack and there's <laughs> yeah. not a chance I'm jumping that high to pull yeah. that move off. Yeah. So it's a good point. There's a lot of variations and just because something works for somebody doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Yeah. You get to find your own little way. Uh, doing your own advertising. You know, this is something people don't realize too. Everybody thinks I'm just going to hire a marketing firm and they're just going to, you know, let the, let the money roll in for me. You have to know when to manipulate that that marketing too. What works well? I've seen girls be like, "I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hire someone to go out and hand out business cards." It's like, yeah, that's not gonna work. That's in not this gonna industry. work in this industry. You know what I mean? Like, people are. You know, you, you first of all, you have to be able to target your demographic. You know what I mean? A business card or a direct mail campaign or a TV commercial are being played for anybody and everybody. People that are like dudes at the gym. You know, grandma who's sitting at home because she's got nothing else to do. Oh. These are the people are going to be buying from you. So you have to be able to know how to do social media ads in the beginning. Some of you can't afford to hire a marketing company. We couldn't in the beginning. No. We had to do our own our own paid, you know, Facebook, Instagram ads, our own Yelp stuff. Yeah. When to turn the budget up because you don't have your book full, when to turn it down. Which ones are you just spending recklessly, just prospecting and then aren't paying off? Like these are little things you don't realize. You know what I mean? When your books are empty. Um, dealing with negative reviews. You know what I mean? Everybody yeah. thinks like, oh, I'll never get a bad review. I'm so nice or and friendly. Or if you do, yeah, I'm going to be so professional about it. And Oh, yeah. Wait till they say something nasty and insult you. Yeah, I know. I, I fired myself from that position, so I gave it to someone else. But um, when you have like your own business, your own baby, and you know, you're know you just learning so many different things, and then when someone leaves you that bad review that just is just so insulting, and they really go into detail, and if, if it's a female, it's usually very descriptive and rude and emotional, and that's your baby they're talking about, and you just wanna fire back, and like there's just a way to respond to all the negativity, and there's, you're either that person or you're not, and I'm not, so yeah. I fired myself, and just, Melinda takes care of it. Just know, just know we're human too. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we had a girl that we let go. Oh, I knew you were going to bring up the story. Yeah, we let go. I'm not going to go on the details, but we let go. Anyways, she did some really nasty stuff. And we even found a secret chat where she was saying some nasty stuff about Shauna and I, and we let her go. And she was like blasting us out there on social media. 
So my wife stuck up for her and said something back. And then that girl took that snippet of the one thing my wife said, the only thing, what people didn't see was all the stuff she was doing, the stealing, the nasty stuff she'd said, ain't any, and, and they spun it. And people were like, yeah, that's Shauna from Live Bay is a bad person. Yeah. Unfollow. Unfollow. I'll yeah, never buy getting, their products would, yeah. again. And it was like, you saw one portion, one snippet, and didn't see you're siding with a stranger you've never met over the person who's giving you free tips and has always helped you out. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of yeah. a, it's, it was a very one-sided, skewed thing. Yeah, and it was horrible. I mean, I was literally, like, put, uh, like, they were blasting me. Like, it was pretty brutal. And I, like, I was in the group, so I saw it. And I'm, like, trying to, like, reply, like, sticking up for myself. And I'm like, you know what? If you follow me and you're that quick to believe some just stranger who, like, and it was blacked out. Like, all the stuff that, all like, the stuff she, that wrote she wrote was blacked, blacked out. out. And it's, like, if you're so quick to, like, just take someone else's side over, like, you're such, like, a follower of me and, like, you've been following me and stuff like that. It's, like, I don't even want followers like that because you know I know who I am and and you know obviously what I said to her wasn't that nice um but what wasn't said and what wasn't seen was different things was and we're not going to go into that but it's we had to take legal action on that unfortunately it's such an unfortunate situation and I never like when people leave and we're on bad terms whatsoever we really treat like everybody who works for us like family and it's just unfortunate when things go like that but you really need to learn how to respond in a professional matter and I know sometimes when people you know take gouges and it's your baby it really hurts really bad and you want to fire back but yeah, there's no way around that. You just really have to learn the ropes on how to respond to those things. For sure. There's no way around that. And you can't believe everything you read on the internet. I mean, that's yeah. how World War II got started. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that went over way over your heads. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, last but not least, you gotta, this is something that we still struggle with this day, hiring the right staff. You know, you're going to get people in there that, that are going to say all the right things in the interview. They're going to send you pictures of their work. It looks so good when they sent you the photos. And then when they actually got in the chair and started working for you, that they all of a sudden, <laughs> it was like they catfished all their photos. Yeah, it's not going to work. And it's like every it's like every aspect, every person you hire for your business, they're representing your business. And there's different seasons, too, of people that like you that work for you. Sometimes it's going to like work out and sometimes it's not. And we had a nickel for every time we hired someone. It was just like, I love you, Mike Ashana. You've changed my life. I'm I'm live bay yeah. for life. Yeah. Blood in, blood out. Yeah. You're my homies, you know what I mean? And then out the other side of their flip mouth. The script. The, yeah, flip the script. I start I'm no longer at Live Bay. I started my own business and yeah. I've and they were jerks and they were like you would just Sean is such a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like get in line. Oh my gosh. Like, okay. It's just crazy. But um, gonna, you'll see. You'll if, have. That's just something you have left, to learn. If you've left somebody else and you were you were in the right, everybody's a saint. I'm just saying you're gonna see. You're gonna get some people that come through, and you're gonna hire them. You think they were a certain a certain way or a certain way they portrayed themselves, and it's gonna be a whole different animal. And then they're gonna start poisoning the rest of your staff. Yeah. And you're gonna have to learn how to how to fire the the bad apples and get them out of there so they don't take the rest of the staff down. Yeah, and there's no shortcut on on people's personalities and what they're going to do and what like season they're going through. So you could hire someone who's like just amazing and they're ben- they're really just like amping up your company and doing all the right things, and then unfortunately like new you know, season comes, they change and it and it changes and that's something that like you just kind of have to go through and grow through. You're gonna you're gonna have a hard time with that one, especially like I think we still struggle with that one. Mike does. I do because I'm always like, what went wrong? Like what changed from the time that we were you know, they were, they were like super down for the cause. We were all cool. You know, we were all going to Christmas parties and outings and they were just like, you know, a total team player. Like what happened? What, what went wrong to the point that they were saying nasty stuff about us? I've never been able to figure that one out. I've only had a couple people ever that have actually ever left and where it's been like a good mutual parting ways. Yeah. That's unfortunate. And I don't know, that's something we still go through, but that's okay. That was a good episode. Good job. Oh, well, thank you. You good job. <laughs> oh, you good job. Stop. <laughs> all right. That's all we got for you guys today. Listen, it's there's no secret sauce to this thing. If you're out there, whether you've been doing this 10 years or you've been doing it 10 days, just know that every day there's going to be something new. Like I said, we, we still find new stuff. We get hit with new lawsuits, new everything that we're, learning, yeah. that we're learning on the fly as well. But uh, obviously, if you haven't done so yet, please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to our podcast. Uh, join, join our Facebook. Tea. Yep, join our Facebook group, The Lash Tea. And please refer somebody who could benefit greatly from this information. And ten, until then, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you.